our morning rounds. A study out today highlights the impact of sleep on our memory. Research reveals that as we age, brain waves become unsynchronized. Because of that, the brain fails to hit the save button to keep new memories while we sleep. The report also points to a new treatment for boosting brain power among the elderly. This could help the estimated 6 million Americans with Alzheimer's or mild cognitive impairment. Matthew Walker co-authored the study. His new book is called Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. It's published by Scribner. That's an imprint of Simon & Schuster, which is a division of CBS. Matthew heads UC Berkeley Sleep and Neuroimaging Lab and joins us once again at the table. Good to see you, Mr. Walker. Great to be Walker. back. Thank you very much. Last time you were here, Matthew, I felt like dead men walking, and something tells me I'm not going to feel much better after this. I'm so sorry. But I am, too. I am, too. But what did you discover about the link between sleep, sleep and your memory? So what we found is that in young, healthy adults, the deep sleep brain waves are perfectly synchronized in time and that synchronization helps you essentially hit the save button on new memories. But as we get older, those deep sleep brain waves become mistimed. So it's almost uh, a little bit like a drummer who's just one beat off the rhythm. <laughs> yes. And so you can't cement those memories into the brain. So you end up forgetting the next morning rather than remembering. Uh, Matthew, what age are we talking about I was here? <laughs> John, yeah. Well, it's your a, definition of aging. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Let's be clear. It's a progressive decline. Here in this study, we were looking at people who are 65 and older, and that's where we saw a marked change in that synchrony of brain uh, rhythms. But we do know that deep sleep decline starts even in your 30s into your 40s. Why and, does it decline? Well, part of the reason is that the deep sleep generating center of the brain, which sits just above your eyes in the middle of the brain, that actually starts to deteriorate. We lose brain cells there as we get older. And as you lose those brain cells, you can't generate that same depth and quality of sleep, nor can you synchronize those brain waves either. Anything we can do to get the drummer back on time to get the synchronicity back? Well, uh, that's exactly what we're hoping to do. We're actually trying to develop new electrical brain stimulation technology at my sleep center to see if we can actually try to resynchronize those brain waves, almost acting like an electrical metronome to actually amplify those deep sleep brain waves, resynchronize them, and give back some deep sleep quality to older adults and maybe salvage aspects of learning and memory. So last time you were here, you said adults all need at least eight hours of sleep a night. So we've all been wearing the trackers for I noticed, yeah. four nights. Yep. And so these are the results because you said short sleep equals a short life. So Nora's up first. She slept an hour, an average of six hours and 36 minutes these last three days from Sunday to Thursday. John slept an average of six hours and 16 minutes. I slept an average of... What is it? Uh, four hours and 25 minutes. Oh, my goodness. I know. Um, you feel for me, don't you? Yeah. I do. You want to rock me like a baby. <laughs> I do. I, I, I looked at that. And Tell me where you live. I'm coming yeah. to your sleep intervention. The Upper West No, Side. I'm so worried this, about you, Gail. This is very I'm so worried serious about you. stuff because I'm talking about your life and your health here. But for the life of me, I don't know how anybody that works a shift. I know I need to do better, but I don't know what can we do. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about everybody. Because yeah. we get up, we get up at like 4 o'clock in the That's morning, right. sometimes 3.30. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's desperately difficult. To, we need to prioritize sleep. We need an attitude change in society. Mm -hmm. We know that if you're getting seven hours of sleep or less, you are at significantly higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. You are going to be at almost a 200% higher risk of developing some form of cancer if you're getting six hours of sleep or less. <sighs> we also know that those who are getting six hours or less have a 210% increased risk of having a heart attack or a stroke in their lifetime. So it's, Do you think there's a stigma associated with sleep in some way? I, I do. I think, we've, I think sleep has an image problem. I think we chastise people who get sufficient sleep. We give them this label of being slothful or lazy, mm -hmm. and that has to change. Um, and it has to change at the government level to start with. When was the last time that any government, first world nation, actually had a public health campaign regarding sleep. We have them for, you know, drowsy driving. We have them for alcohol, drugs, you diet. You see a public health campaign here? You think that's necessary? I think it's necessary huh? in all developed nations. Yeah, and no one is doing it. We need that movement. It's so interesting because, you you know, as a mother of three kids, I can see when they have like one or two hours less of sleep how it completely affects their behavior. And so I've yeah. been very strict about trying to get them to bed at the same time every night because you it's so radically apparent how it changes your behavior and your mood. And you're, is it working? 
I'm okay now, but they're still younger. I don't have teenagers. Yeah, you have teenagers, man, it's not I doing, know. Yes. I mean, it's difficult, but what you're gifting them is probably the greatest life insurance policy you could ever imagine. Yeah. But we forego that with, with ourselves. I know. You're, you're saying I'm a yeah. good mom. Yeah, very, very, you are a yes, good mom. Are. Very important. And hopefully my mom daughter's <laughs> listening. <laughs> very important information. Thank you. This is serious stuff. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Matthew Walker. Why We Sleep is on sale wherever you like to buy your books. You've got lots of options there.